hour. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Horror Hour TV. Hello and welcome to the Horror Hour, the show where we discuss, debate, and disagree on all things horror. We're your hosts, Ben. Hi. <laughs> George. Hi. And I'm Yutaka. Hello. Um, and this week we have a special guest with us. We have the incredible Danielle Bergio, aka Soccer Mom from Army of the Dead. Uh, she's an industry veteran, actor, and stunt performer with many horror film credits under her belt. So um, before the onslaught of Army of the Dead questions, though, we thought it would be good to kind of get a little bit to know our guests. So I've, I'll start off with, um, I did see that uh, you were in another horror and action director film, um, John Carpenter's Vampires. And so what was it like on set and what um, occurred during that time that made you want to pursue stunt work? Oh, uh, well, uh Vampires was one of my very first films ever. Not my very first, but certainly the most significant. Like the the one that I would say was really like the launch of my career. So super special to me. I had like the most amazing time on that movie. I'm a huge fan of John Carpenter and his wife, Sandy, and everyone that works for them. Um, that was a long time ago, but... Um, yeah, it was, that project was so special. So I just really started, I just thought about doing stunts and I had done a couple things, a couple, I had a couple credits under my belt, but like mm -hmm. they didn't let me do anything. You know, I was basically a glorified extra on the other <laughs> movies that I worked on. And I had only worked on two others. And then um, Jeff Amata, who uh, coordinates a lot of John's movie, I guess probably all of John's movies. And also it's just a huge um huge, amazing stunt coordinator, a fight coordinator. He did like Fight Club and he designed all the action stuff for all the Bourne movies. Like he's a legend. Wow. Anyone in the stunt world knows who Jeff Amata is. So I had met him on the set of Blade, which was my actual, like the movie that I did just before John Carpenter's. And, um, and he called me up and said, can, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing? Can you fly to New Mexico? Like it was like in two days. And I was like, um, are you calling the right person? You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm green. I, I, you don't even know me. Like, and he goes, no, you're just going to have to fight some vampires. And I know you were a dancer. You're going to be fine. And I was like, really? Cause I don't really, I'm not experienced in stunts. And he said, no, 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 you're going to be fine. And that, he literally met me at the plane, took me straight to rehearsal, put me on an air ram. He goes, okay, this is an air ram. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like teaching me how I have to ride the air ram. So there, if you, uh, if you guys are familiar with the movie at the very beginning, uh, the team comes into the farmhouse, mm -hmm. you know, looking yeah. for the vampires. There's all the suspense and James Woods, you know, opens one door and then you turn and I come flying out of this other door. So I had to take the air ram from the inside of this closet door and air ram across the room. The ceilings were not that high. And land on the other stunt guy, um, Dave Rowden. I had to land on Dave's back, who was on the other side of the room. So if you do stunts, you know, like you don't typically get an air ram on your first job. <laughs> and even if you do get an air ram, you're probably going to like air ram just into open air into like a bag. Mm -hmm. Not with like a low ceiling and land on somebody's back. So that was literally like, hi, welcome to rehearsal. Um, so we did that. We learned a bunch of fight choreography and I, I didn't even know what movie I was working on, to be honest with you. I just showed up. Like, I didn't know who was in it, what it was. So then I get there and there's James Woods and there's John Carpenter. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so exciting. So we did the, we did the one shot, the air ram. It went well. We, uh, did the fight part and then my character dies, right? She's dead. Um, but then they go, well, no, no, go, go and, um, you know, get her squibbed. And I was like, squibs, what's that? 
you know, so they take me in the room and they put this dress on me that's got all this like explosive devices on it. And I'm like, oh, this, this is kind of terrifying. <laughs> um, and so then they, they blow me up and then I'm dead again. So I'm thinking for sure, like, this is it, I'm done. And then they're like, no, nope, take her back again. Well, you know, cause I'm a vampire. So I guess I keep getting up and keep getting killed over and over and over again. And I didn't know any of this. I hadn't read the script. I hadn't seen pages. I had just showed up. I had no idea that this scene was just gonna like keep going on and on and on. And in the end, I got to do uh, a ratchet. I got to do the air ram. I was working with squibs and I got blasted by a shotgun. I got dragged outside. Um, the fire part was actually a, a different stunt performer. They had shot that previously. So I didn't do that part, but it was literally like all these stunts just crammed in one um, and an experience that most people don't get to do until they've been in the business for a long time. And I was so young and so green and I had, I, but I was having the best time. I literally was just having a ball and I was getting beat up and I was <laughs> bruised and I was, you know, I was sore and I was exhausted, but I, I literally had the time of my life and that movie completely changed the trajectory of my career. Cause all of a sudden I had all this experience and I was working with these amazing stunt guys that all were super sweet and uh, told their friends about me and said, hire her. And that was it. I was like Psh, rocket ship. I just didn't stop working after that. So that John Carpenter's vampires is so special to me. That's amazing. Um, and it went so well, and I was getting along so well with John and everyone else that they invited me to stay. And they said, we, you know, we'll dress you up as a different character and we'll disguise you. And so I got to stay and work also as one of the hookers in the motel scene. So you can see I'm like in this little um, tight, bright green mini skirt and like a white denim jacket and I get killed again there as a totally different character. <laughs> it was great fun. <laughs> killed twice. I love it. Well, obviously you've done so many stunts in many, many films. But is there one to you that you pick up and think, okay, like that is my favorite so far that you've done that as a favorite stunt performance of yours? You know, it's it's so hard because um, obviously some of the more spectacular stunts are not necessarily favorites because they either hurt a lot or, you know, like you get injured. Um, some of the most exciting ones on screen were maybe one of the easier ones in real life. And for me, the best experience is always more about the people that I'm working with than the stunt itself. But I do have one stunt that I was really proud of because, again, it was kind of early in my career. I got called. Um, I, I, it was a last minute job. I think it was I was a replacement for somebody that they weren't able to get the shot. And so they said, hey, can you can you jet down here to, you know, central L.A.? And so I sure jump in my car and I get there and they're like, OK, you have to jump from this building to the next building. But the trick is the character misses the second building. So you have to like, I had to catch my foot at the edge of the rooftop. And um, I had a safety line, you know, so that I didn't fall to my death, but it wasn't assisting me in any way. Like I literally had to make the jump and there wasn't a lot of room for, for like with a ramp or anything. I mean, it was, I literally just had to run and jump from one building to the next. And I oh am gosh. not a daredevil kind of a person, <laughs> believe it or not. I, I was a dancer that, got into stunts by accident so I was not the I was not the kid you know jumping off of things and wanting to jump out of airplanes and all that um so I so that was one of those moments that I was terrified <laughs> um there were a lot of moments in my career where I was terrified and I just I just manned up and I did it and again I was I was pretty early in my career and so it was just a massive sense of accomplishment um, and the set went well. I mean, I did get my hands got really cut up because, you know, you've got the the scratchy roof paper, that tar paper, whatever mm -hmm. they put it. <clears throat> so when my hands hit it, I don't know if you've ever cut your hands, but it's you have all these nerve endings and it's it's not fun. Um, so the first time and this is what people don't realize about stunts. You do you do a stunt and you get hurt. It happens. Um, but then you have to do it again and again and again and again. <sighs> So once you cut yourself up, for example, you have to do that eight, nine, 10 more times and you keep landing on that injury, yeah. whatever it is, it's not fun. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that one always sticks out as one of my favorite ones. I was just on a little TV show 
Um, <laughs> and then I have other ones that were way more spectacular, but you know, maybe I was on a wire, they used a little camera trick. Um, so it looked amazing, but it wasn't as scary. It's always a little bit of that. That's well, really you, badass. <laughs> that is, it is really badass. And that's another thing. We're going to talk about the stunt industry more um, as we go on, but it is something that deserves a lot more respect than it gets um, in Hollywood at large. For example, like an Oscar category, which was a, it was a massive conversation with John Wick 3. It didn't happen, but I think the more and more that these, that, that stunt performers are going to be relied on more in these big blockbusters, I think that conversation I hope is going to be more wide open. But you've also ventured into writing and producing the horror comedy Girl Trip and the upcoming horror thriller Squealer. Do you find that you gravitate towards horror films more than any other genres or what is your process? <laughs> it's, it's so funny that I have done a lot of horror movies. It seems to be my destiny. Um, but as an audience member, I am not like a huge horror fan. I like I get scared <laughs> when I watch them, especially before I go to bed. And that's usually when I'm watching my movies. Um, so, so no, I don't know why I've had a, a lot of success in the horror genre in my career. It, they're the most fun to work on, I think. I love working on horror movies. Um, but yeah, watching them. Mm. <laughs> so it's not intentional. Squealer just um, happened. So I have a creative partner. Andy Armstrong, who's a phenomenal action director. And we've been developing projects for the last couple of years together. And most of our projects are not horror based, they are action based. Um, but we knew for our first film out, we wanted to do something that was um, a little bit lower budget. We wanted to like, just be raw. You know, and, and horror is one of the genres where you can get away with a little less of a budget. You don't need the big, big, big mm -hmm. stars because yeah. the audience is so strong. Like they just love the content. So you don't need, it's you true. know, Tom Cruise or Charlize Theron to get a movie made in the horror genre, which is great. Um, and the fans are so passionate and there's so much fun you can have with them. So we, we decided uh, that we wanted to um, tackle this movie. It's called Squealer and it's, um, it's about a pig farmer who has uh, turned serial killer. And um, <laughs> <laughs> that's about all I'll say about it. I can't say too much about the storyline. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a lot of good fun and like how can we make this fun and gruesome and I think it's got a little bit of all of that, you know. It's definitely uh, a different kind of horror where we're trying to break the mold a bit. It's not mm. gonna be a typical horror movie. It's not gonna look like a typical horror movie or feel like a typical horror movie, um, but it's, it's, it will be hopefully scary, gruesome, and a whole lot of fun at the same That's time. That's exciting. I, I <laughs> love that. I like when, um... Uh, people try and I, I love it when they just want to reinvent or bring something new to the genre um, because I, I feel that at times sometimes horror can get stale but then you have those just those moments to where you can take something and just become something so magical and I, I still look at you know Wes Craven's scream when you know slashers were kind of like oh okay and then he just turned it upside down and people were like oh my gosh and then it became copy after copy but um, I, I do. I just, I love that. And hearing that, that makes me really excited. That sounds like a lot of fun. So, all right, well, we'll go into now um, Army of the Dead. And so, but I will say with Army of the Dead um, was a massive success for Netflix. I mean, it became one of the most watched films of all time. Uh, 75 million viewers in the first month. Um, a lucky few of us, myself included, got to see it on the big screen, which was a magical experience. It was the second film I got to go back, you know, during the pandemic. But um, I mean, it's a sprawling action horror film that pulls no punches from that gut wrenching opening to the somber ending. Um, so first off, that opening to me was so unexpected. I, I loved the whole sequence. And it was it was such a shock because, uh, you know, you were so kick ass. You you know, you could tell the emotion when you had to 
kill the um the couple in the car because you saw they were bit and you didn't want to but you had to um and then you're going through this journey just as this character that you know is fighting to live uh, finding her daughter and then ultimately they perish in the end which i did not expect um but did you ever ex um expect the uh reception to that character because it connected with so many and honestly it was it, it was a great opening overall and that character just I, I still get mad because I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought I was watching a lead. And then he just, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he just squashed her. Yes. Um, I know. Um, well, first of all, I mean, just getting, getting to be a part of ARMY was literally a dream come true. And I've always wanted to work with Zach. So um, it, it was just a tremendous experience start to finish. But no, I did not expect such um such a reaction to soccer mom you know I think if you total my minutes on screen it's about two <laughs> I think it's about two minutes um and honestly even when we were filming I was expecting to only be out there for like a couple of days because Zach told me you know kind of what, what we were going to be doing it wasn't really in the script on the on the paper it was in Zach's mind so oh, wow. I didn't even really know a lot of what we were doing until we got there. And, and then I just ended up being, a, it felt, it did feel bigger to me when I was there than I was expecting. I was, I was in more scenes than I was expecting. I was like, wow, this is, um, it was such a fulfilling, amazing experience. And I really felt like I was part of the main cast. They all made me feel that way. They all really welcomed me especially Sam Wynn, who plays Chambers. <laughs> she was the first person, the van pulled up my first day of set and the door opened and Sam is standing there. And she welcomed me with such open arms and made me feel like, again, part of the you know main cast. And I, I remember that feeling of like, wow, you know, I'm so used to just being a day player or mm -hmm. a stunt performer. And, you know, and I work with a lot of big actors and they're great and they're very respectful and they always make me feel welcome. But it, this was different, you know, th this was really different and really special. Um, and Deb and Zach had set up some training for, you know, all of the, the main cast. And then they included me in that with all of the weapons training and they brought in experts so that we could all feel really comfortable with the guns. Cause you've got so much going on when you're on set, you know, you, there's lights, there's people, there's zombies, you're hitting marks, you have to fire here, the camera's there, you have to, you know, know where, there's so much, you're thinking of your, your acting and your dialogue, if you have any, which I didn't in this, but you know, it, it's a lot. So giving us that opportunity to work with the weapons for like a week, so that that starts to feel like second nature. And I have worked with weapons a lot over the years in my career, but, but this experience was like, wow, I really felt like one with my AK-47 or whatever I had, I can't remember which gun I had. It was a big gun. Um, so that was, all of that was just, it, it made it so rich and so great. And so, yay, I have this amazing experience. I got to work with Zach and I had so much fun and I got to step into these badass shoes. But then when I actually saw the movie and I also saw it in the theater, it was my first movie since the pandemic. And so that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, my jaw was on the floor. I mean, I started crying. <laughs> I got really emotional. <laughs> I think, you know, not just because I went on the emotion that Zach takes everyone on, but also for me, it was just such a moment of like, wow, how cool that I just got to do that. And you know, anyone who works with Zach, like, I mean, he, he made me look like a total badass. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, this is so cool. Um, and then getting the reaction from some of the fans and hearing from a lot of people and, and hearing how it really did affect people emotionally. And um, a lot of people reached out was something I had never quite experienced. And that for me was the best part of all of it. I mean, that was like a giant cherry on top. <laughs> Yeah, just to know I, it, that that I had some little tiny impact, you know. It's true, Very it's cool. true. And even in the short, like you say, you know, the short amount of time, you know, that opening, I think, you know, it just goes to show how, you know, if you are if you are a 
a great actor you don't need lines you, you know you can be this performance and I think that really does and you know you can see this character become so fleshed out in the space of what we see is maybe you know four or five minutes within the opening you know she goes from the stock room to this badass and I remember the first time I watched it it took me a second and I didn't even realize that this was the same character and I was like and then I went back and I was like oh my god because then I remembered the door and I was like this is the same part oh, this is so cool I because I just thought that we, we were seeing loads of different you know characters so that one for me was amazing because you know as I say you get to see a sort of a small a, you know a quick story of, of, of this woman's life now there's a part and I, I think I've got sorry, where you're down in a bottle of JD and I think are you getting a tattoo you I say, am getting a tattoo yes I we, am. what is that tattoo can you say <laughs> do we know and I have to say because the fans you know especially on Twitter the fans are um wonderful and they they don't miss a beat and I kept <laughs> waiting when is gonna when is somebody gonna ask me what my tattoo is because not a single person has asked but I'm getting my knuckles tattooed and it says headshot oh, that's, so <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and I do have a photo of that so I, I will <laughs> post it when this when this airs I will post it <laughs> Yeah, that was great. That was actually the very first thing that we shot. That was my first day on set. My the first time I I walked onto set um, was that shot. So that one was really special. Well, we all know that Zack Snyder is famous for his opening sequences. Whether it's the timelessness of Watchmen, the despair of Batman v Superman, or the electric injustice of Sucker Punch, Zack knows how to deliver. So we must ask. What is the process of filming a Zack Snyder opening sequence? Is there dialogue? Are they just shot like any other scenes? And does Zack then work his magic in post? What's it like? Yeah, I think they. I think he shoots them just as he shoots everything, right? They're all pieces of a story. Um, and then, of course, you know, of course, there's all kinds of post magic, but I think the real magic is there on set. Like you're, you're just in it. And he has such a clear vision of what he wants. That's why he's my favorite director that I've ever worked with uh, because he's so clear. He knows exactly. And he knows exactly how to get it from you. And also he's like really in the mix more than most directors. Now I know army was a little bit special because he DP'd, right? He was running the camera. And so he wasn't like, a million miles away in a tent on a monitor. He was like with us, with that camera on his shoulder and you know, giving direction and talking to us and telling us what he needs and then throwing it back on. So it was a different, it was a different experience than anything I've ever worked on, other than like when I did my short films, it felt more like that, more like run and gun and the way you make movies when you don't have millions of dollars and you're, you know, got mm -hmm. studio backing. Um, so it was this perfect blend of that, like raw passion, the way you love to make movies, but with the big budget and mm. all the zombies and Zach <laughs> and, you know, and all of his amazing people that he brings. Cause it's not just Zach, it's Zach. And, you know, I mean, he has an incredible team of people. Um, yeah, he and his wife, I mean, they are, and they're some of the best producers in my opinion. I mean, that the is passion. amazing. Yeah, and Wes, Deb and Wes, both of both of them. Um, yeah, they produce the hell out of those movies. Like it's no joke. There's there's so much going on <laughs> that people don't even realize how much work goes in um, behind these things. But but yeah, I think it, it. He does he does film. I think all of his things just like you know he's he's just all about the story and he just knows how to bring it to screen. He knows what he needs and what he wants and how to get it and the right way to go about it. I don't know. I say he's a mastermind. I honestly don't know how he does it, but it's just his, whatever he has in his mind, bringing it to screen, whether it's this, you know, it's six minutes, that opening title sequence. And yet it tells this whole huge story and he takes you on such an emotional journey in such a short amount of time. I mean, it's pretty crazy again with no dialogue. And yeah, when we were, when we were filming, you know, and my daughter was like, you know, when we get to the container and my daughter breaks away and she turns back to see me, I'm, you know, I'm screaming at her. No, 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 run, 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 you know, whatever I was saying. So we're, you know, I mean, there was dialogue. Um, there were little bits of dialogue as we were shooting, but nothing was scripted. And 
Um, it wasn't like, and now you say this, you're just free. You're in the moment. You're, you're living it. You feel like you're there. The zombies looked really real. So, you know, it wasn't hard to believe like they were coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a great opening. I mean, the whole movie, honestly, uh, I mean, you, you learn to not get attached because uh, wow. And when you mentioned Samantha Wynn, I, her action sequence as well, that, that whole, like that also gutted me. I was like, what? No, I, I, I wanted, oh my gosh. I was so upset because I wanted, well, a lot of people I wanted to live, but <laughs> that, that, that whole sequence was that the tension, the fear, and then just the whole, <sighs> a badassery if that's even a word but it was just so amazing um and if it's not a word it should be a word and <laughs> when you look it up samantha wins picture should be right next to it <laughs> yeah i mean one of the things i do love uh, about zach snyder um he really as vin had sta stated um he sees stunt work as an art form versus the rest of the um, industry. And I know you kind of already gave um, some of this, but we did have Destiny, who is also a huge Snyder fan as well, just which I think you might have just answered though, what it was like working on set because it sounds like uh it was it sounds like a family, which is I think amazing because you know, you hear other uh, movies aren't really like that with the cast where it sounds like you guys were all ingrained and just I, I mean it's it's rare. It, it, it is rare to have that kind of connection just across the board. Um, and, you know, I mean, I can't speak for anyone else. I can only speak for my own experience. But this particular movie was incredibly, incredibly special. And working with Zach and Deb, and I guess because, you know, they are a family. And then I think most of the people that work with them have been with them for many, many years. So there's a shorthand, you know, that's what's nice. A lot of filmmakers do that. A lot of filmmakers stick with their people because, you know, once you, there's the learning curve and then, you know, you do develop a shorthand after a while. So, but they're just, they're just such good people. Like, like I've said this before, if you were to walk into like a bar or something and you said, okay, there's a very famous Hollywood director in here. And if you, you know, you didn't know what he looked like, you would not point to Zach and go that one. He's <laughs> the, he's the famous Hollywood director because he's so down to earth. And so, you know, he's like throwing the football in between takes with the crew, you know, I, I don't ever see that on any of the other sets I've worked with. Um, and yeah, just there is a really strong sense of family. And that's nice. That's really nice. Especially they're long days, long hours. Um, you know, some, some, you know, I was only there for a few weeks, but you know, some people are there for months on end, many months on end. So, and it's a movie at the end of the day, you know, it should be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it should be, it should be that. Um, but it's a lot of pressure and obviously, you know, there's a lot of money at stake and it is a business at the end of the day. So sometimes when you're on set, it feels very heavy and serious. I, I mean, uh, I think you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was a really diverse movie. It's one of the many amazing things about it, but it was the women in the movie that really kicked ass from Samantha Wynn's action sequence, which you Tucker brought up to the physicality of the zombie queen. Did you have a particularly favorite stunt moment from this film? It could be from any of the actors. Well, I think you already mentioned Samantha Wynn's sequence, and I 100% I mean, agree. Come yeah. on. Uh, honestly, like from being a stunt woman myself and knowing the level of skill that that took, what she pulled off, I mean, I literally got chills thinking about it. Um, again, because I, I mean, I know, I know what it takes, and that, that is no joke. Like she's phenomenally talented. Like, okay, yes, she's beautiful. She's a great actress, but her physical skill level is mind blowing. Um, yeah, that whole sequence. I mean, I, I think personally, it's probably one of the coolest female action sequences ever, ever in the history of ever. It goes on and on and on, but it never gets boring. It doesn't get repetitive. You're, you're emotionally locked in with mm -hmm. her. Um, and then it has this beautiful crescendo. <laughs> and um, yeah, but all of it. I mean, Athena, who played the zombie queen, 
I mean, another phenomenal stunt performer. And I thought, like, I mean, the whole movie is chock full of really, really great action. Yeah, I great mean, action. There's one thing I love um, about Zach, and I love this when I saw Dawn of the Dead, is that he does a great mix of action and horror. And so when Army of the Dead came out, and again, to those that didn't get to see it on the big screen, I mean, there's just something watching that and just seeing all of that put together and it was it, for me it was an emotional journey just because you get so invested in every character I mean it was it's a wonderful story and I'm so happy to see that there's going to be pretty much an army of the dead universe with all these other um, spinoffs and potential sequel I, I just I'm so excited so I again I can't recommend this movie enough in general but the stunt work uh, was just impressive and uh, as have been had mentioned, yes, I thought the women really outshined the men, which is fine. Um, even though I'm, I'm still, I love Dieter. He cracks me up, but <laughs> I really, I really did enjoy this film. It was just such a wonderful, like, I'm so happy to see like Zach get something and Netflix is just like, here, go with it. And that that was yes just... thank you to netflix for giving him his platform and letting him dp and letting Finally. him really like have the the control that he wants and yeah all of these spin-offs and prequels and i just i just a few days ago did the army of the dead vr experience oh my gosh if are you, you doing that because in london i got an email to say that it's a thing and i can book tickets oh i'm booking them then okay you gotta go it's okay. so i'm so jealous <laughs> fun it is right now it's in los angeles until the end of august i think and then it's going to be touring all over the country and all over the world yeah um I believe the so you're in the truck and you get to you know you have this VR experience where all the zombies are coming at you and I mean I was having like flashbacks because <laughs> I had a couple of scenes my two of my scenes I shot with the truck and in the truck I think it was the same truck like I'm pretty sure it's the same truck they used in the in the actual movie and then the whole experience that they have around it's like this was the set like I felt like I was back on set uh, I felt like I was soccer mom all over again. It was so awesome. That's amazing. So, it's so much fun. Get Grab your friends and, and go. So how cool they did that. Um, you mentioned Dieter, Matias. I love him. <laughs> he's so, he's such a love and he's such a crack up. Um, and Army of Thieves is, is coming out. I don't know when, but um, I'm, I mean, I'm really excited about that. I love his character. Um, and then there's the anime prequel. And yeah, it just keeps going. And then I heard some, you know, I heard some chat about an army of the dead too. I don't know what's happening, but please like. I know. And, <laughs> and, and us, we want, we want a soccer mom TV series. Where we <laughs> yes. see what so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Can everyone write to Netflix yeah. and tell them please. Soccer mom series, please. Yes. Please. Release the soccer moms. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, we've, we've talked, we've talked about, you know, stunt work and things. And I think, it's it's starting to become especially with these huge movies now you know i think more and more people are really starting to understand how much of a big deal it is and how much it brings to the film but i think for a long time you know it was by a lot of hollywood it was kind of overlooked by you know it was always the the main actors and all this um you know and you had things like resident evil deadpool 2 harry potter and recently the flash that had you know several degrees of tragedies when it came to stunt work so from i'm guess you know from from your perspective as an insider do you have you seen a change in the way that stunt stunt work and stunt performers have now are now being treated was there ever a, a difference and you know do you think we'll ever get to see that Oscar category for us to work. Cause I think when you look at it, there, there should be. There, okay. Yeah. We're going to start backwards. O Oscar category. Yes, there should be. And what people don't realize is most people think that, Oh, stunt performers aren't getting an Oscar. That's so sad. And yes, that is so sad. Stunt performers should get an Oscar, but the big push is for the stunt coordinators to get the Oscar first, even the stunt coordinator, the head of the department who designs all of the action sequences and collaborates with the director, usually on how to shoot it. And sometimes, I mean, a lot of times, like, you know, you shoot it in rehearsal, they set the camera angles and everything. And then, you know, the, the first unit crew comes in and they just sort of copy what, what's been set up. So this, 
and now more and more of these films are being nominated for Oscars. Like, I mean, what would Mad Max be without the action? Even back, you know, years ago, Hacksaw nope. Ridge. Hacksaw Ridge. What is Hacksaw Ridge without the action sequences? You know, yeah, there's huge, true. huge movies that um, these department heads, and they're the only department head, I believe, besides casting directors, um, that are not recognized. And that's mm-hmm. astounding. Like some of the other departments have like two. <laughs> like, you know, I think sound department gets two and other departments get two. And great, they deserve it. But I mean, the stunt coordinator, I mean, that's massive. Their, their job is so important and so it's mind blowing to me that they're not recognized by the Academy. So if anyone feels passionate about it, um, hashtag stand up for stunts. If you follow that, you can find there's tons of petitions online. There's information mm. online. I encourage all the fans to like make their voices heard and stand up for all the stunt people. Hopefully the stunt coordinators will get it. And then at some point, maybe stunt performers will get it as well. Right. Um, the Emmys have now recognized stunt people, which is great. Some of the other ones, but the Oscars, that's the biggest one. And they're yeah. not still. Um, so that is super sad. And now I forgot what the beginning of the question <laughs> was because I was going to go backwards. Oh, how it's changed over the years. I, yes. Um, the stunts, I think in a, lot, in a lot of ways, it really is still the same. Although, obviously, as the movies have gotten bigger, the stunts get bigger and then the technology gets bigger. So there's, yes, more things that are done on green screen, but also there's more expectation to make it bigger and bigger and bigger. Like, look at the Fast and Furious franchise and what they've had to keep up with. And that, there's a lot of that that is not green screen. There's, you know, people literally doing crazy, crazy stunts in cars. And um, so I think it balances out. It's always been dangerous. There have always been people, um, unfortunately, getting injured. I think now with the internet and social media, people are becoming more aware of that. It was easier to hide those things from the public in the past, but they were still happening. And now it's, you know, everyone's got their phones and it's, it's not so easy for, for them to keep those things quiet. Um, and it's very unfortunate. And a lot of times, you know, um, well, there's, a, there's just a number of reasons that those things happen. You know, part, part of it is par for the course, but also part of it is just um, the inner workings or people that get hired maybe that, you know, aren't as knowledgeable um but there there's a huge risk i think when you get into stunts you know that and i think every stunt performer needs to be educated and um responsible and know what they need to do for their own safety and not be afraid to say no if if it's something that doesn't feel right and feel safe because there's a lot of pressure you know sometimes i think people do things that they think that they're maybe not capable of and then but they feel the pressure it's a you know, multi-million dollar thing you've got these you know big people looking and pressuring you and and also people just kind of want to say yes they want to push their career mm-hmm. um, and I think it's very important to be if you are a stunt person to be very honest about what your skill level is not just for your own safety but for the safety of people around you oh yeah um, yeah I, I mean I it it does baffle me that um, stunt work is often overlooked. Um, I just, I think about some of my favorite films, horror films to any film really. And I think about if, especially if there's some great big action sequence or chase scene, I mean, without our stunt performers, we wouldn't have half the things that we love. And I do think, I think the fans hopefully understand that. I I hope the industry eventually catches up, but I I really do. I think the stunt performers are working just as hard, if not harder, because in a sense, you're putting your health at times on the line, but you're also a performer. You, You deserve the recognition. That's just my opinion, because again, there's just so many um, great movies that I can think of. And I I just wonder, I'm like, well, if if we're not going to recognize the stunts, then I don't know that it it boggles me and it it upsets me. So I will I'll find that hashtag as well, because, yeah, Mm. without our stunt performers, we just wouldn't have the movies that we love today. So, yeah, yeah. Um, And I do have to. So with um, Army of the Dead and. 
speaking of since we were talking about Zach too, I, I love this, but I've heard so many, but what are the most, what's the most interesting um, army of the dead theory that you've heard? Because so many have some crazy theories about, you know, what really went on <laughs> alien or not aliens, but robots. And um, it's, it's interesting. Have you heard any of those or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, and it's hard to wrap my head around it, but um well, I think, you know, Zach has talked about the alien thing, right? Because it starts off Area 51. There's mm-hmm. there's spaceships and things that you can see when you go back and you look. And then as the zombies are dying, you start to see the like the blue behind them or mm-hmm. right. They look kind of like mm-hmm. robotic and all that. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't know the depth of uh, what goes on in Zach's mind, but I have no doubt it's all thoroughly thought out. The one that I'm fascinated <laughs> with is the time loop theory. And I, you know, and it, it's so funny because the first time I watched the movie and I watched it several times, um, the first time I, I was like, hmm, you know, when Vandross gives that speech when they're about to crack the safe and then they see the, the decayed bodies and they're mm-hmm. dressed like them. I was like, what is that about? And then by the end of the movie, I kind of forgot about it. And then the second time I watched it, I was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> And luckily I had to like rely on the fans, right? To pick it apart. I go, cause I'm not smart enough. <laughs> like, what is this? What is this time loop thing? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fascinated by that. And I don't, I still don't know what it's all about. Um, but yeah, he's, I, that's one of the things I love about Zach is it's so layered and he's so smart and he's thought about everything and he's just snuck in these little like, you know, his Easter eggs, like everybody mm-hmm. talks about, go look for Zach's Easter eggs and they're everywhere. Um, yeah, it makes it, it makes it such a fun experience and it makes it like, that's why I think his movies are fun to watch over and over and yep. over. Yeah. So you always catch something new. Um, and speaking of that, I'm laughing because when you, when you tilt your head, I see Elvis behind you. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw the movie four times in the theater. I so I went back to That's back awesome. and I kept watching it. <laughs> and it wasn't until the fourth time. And I think I was actually, when I saw it with Sam, maybe it was the third time. It was when I was with Sam and the credits are rolling. And not only had I seen the full movie that many times, but I had watched that opening sequence a million times over. Cause you know, I was in it and they released it the week before. Right. So I watched it. Of course I watched it like a million times. I kept <laughs> picking it apart. And so how many times had I seen Elvis on that screen? I mean, (laughs) and in all of the ads and everything, it wasn't until like seeing it so many times I'm, I'm looking at the credits and I see Elvis, Jess Harbeck. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Jess Harbeck is the most brilliant stunt performer. She's such a badass. (laughs) And I was like, oh my God, Elvis is Jess. (laughs) You had no idea. I'd watched that face on screen so many times and did not know that that's actually a friend of mine. Oh she didn't say anything to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's a friend of mine. So there you have it. All this. <laughs> what a legend. Like, that's awesome. Yeah. We got, we did get a good few questions from one of our good listeners, Red. And although it's not horror related or Army of the Dead related, We want to ask you a Snyderverse question, which is that if you could play any character in the Snyderverse, who would you want to be? An Amazon like Samantha Wynn, an Atlantean, a Green Lantern member? Who would you like to be? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I mean, if I really, really could dream big, I mean, I would absolutely be Wonder Woman. I mean, hands down. (laughs) (laughs) She's so amazing. Although, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I could kick Gal out of her shoes, even if I had the opportunity, because she's so perfect and amazing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, that was really my era, you know, growing up, Wonder Woman was such a, such a role model and an icon in my childhood. So it'd, be, it'd be hard to kick her out of her shoes. But if I got a chance to step in, I would. <laughs> yeah. I would if she had she's doing, doing, yeah, didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> DC's doing multiverse stuff now, and I'd love to see a multiverse version of Wonder Woman played by you. I mean, look, 
hundred percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Great. <laughs> Matt, you, I say no to that. you next to Michael Keaton's Batman. That would be, that would be cool. <laughs> Just putting it out oh, there. Yeah. Warner Brothers, do something right, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, just jumping back to Army of the Dead real quick. You know, if your character had made the trip to Vegas and had survived that and had gone back in, what do you think her weapon of choice would be? Do you think she would have stayed with the AK-47 or, you know, would she have been like Vanderhome with the buzzsaw or died with the bat? What do you, what do you think she would have, she would have stuck with? Mm. I mean, I was very attached to my, my weapon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's all these little details that you can't see on the screen. Things happen fast. I don't think there were any close-ups of it, but I actually... As it went on, I had all these uh, check marks of all of the zombies that I had killed. So it was just like riddled with hundreds and hundreds of little, you know, all the marks Thanks. that I had killed. So I don't know. I felt I, fe- I felt like that that was sort of part of me. And another thing that you couldn't see is I had like a like a zombie scalp hung from my hip. Um, and I had a necklace of these like dried ears that I had taken I'm going to have to go back and like, uh, how interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can really see it in the, in the film, but yeah, I have some photos of it and that was really, that was fun. So I felt really attached, you know, as a soccer mom transformed, she starts off in her little, like, you know, ballet slippers and her khaki, <laughs> her khakis and her pearls. And then, you know, by the end, you know, at first the, the hair was pulled back by her daughter's clips and then it turned into like the full cornrows. Um, Zach actually wanted me to shave my head. <laughs> Deb was like, no, you can't ask her to shave her head. That's crazy. Um, I kind of wish I did in the end, but I did love my cornrows. So yeah, like getting to that last phase of soccer mom where she, the cornrows and the zombie scalp and the ears mm. and the the big massive gun. Yeah, I just, I, I could have kind of, I could have stayed in those shoes for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, with also the, speaking of um, iconic roles, uh, I have to, I'm just curious then in the whole, I, I know you said you weren't as big of a fan because, you know, they, they scare you, the horror films, but if you could be any iconic or just any final girl um, in any of the franchises, current, past, you know, who would you want to be? Who's who? Um, whose role would you want to have? Well, you know, I had mentioned uh, the, the first thing that popped in my mind and I mentioned Mad Max. So Charlize's character is pretty amazing. <laughs> Um, I'm such a fan of hers as a person, as an actor, her whole career, her whole everything. Um, Mm. Yeah, that would be a really good one. I mean, in the horror genre, the Resident Evil, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, That would be a lot of fun. (laughs) Ripley? I have a couple horror movies that, oh, wow. I mean. That's who I was thinking. Okay. (laughs) I don't. I don't even know why I must have had a brain fart there because uh, <laughs> like my dog is named Ripley because Ripley actually is my favorite female character of all time. So yeah, uh, I don't know why I didn't <laughs> go for that right away. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Too. No, for sure. Yeah. I'm sorry. You, you led me right into that and I missed it, but yeah, no, my dog's name is Ripley. Like she Ripley is like my favorite all time female female character it's one of my favorite roles um we did our favorite um horror films and alien um is my favorite of all time because it holds this it was the first film i had ever seen (laughs) i was six years old probably should have been watching it but it terrified me but it was so good like alien is just it's phenomenal and sigourney weaver as with ripley was fantastic and it always it just goes to show too because i think that same thing that um also horror films or horror actors and actresses they're they're just not recognized as much and i mean she was phenomenal in the series but yeah ripley is that's who i was thinking too but um <laughs> alien is just it's it's top tier for me so i i, I freaking love that film so I do too. And I, I mean, I love that film so much that I don't even actually consider it horror because I don't love horror, but yes, like mm. it's just such a fantastic film. And that's the thing. Like I, I just love, I love movies in general. 
And and there are some horror movies that, you know, are actually some of my favorite movies of all time, Alien and Aliens. And um, mm-hmm. like Shaun of the Dead is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, we want our listeners to, if they're ever, when, whenever they finish listening to this interview, to have a look out for you in the future. So do you know, are you able to say what's perhaps maybe on the horizon with you? Do you have any plans to work with the Snyders again? Or are you going to venture into producing and maybe directing in the future? So I um, I am praying to work with the Snyders again because uh, it's so amazing, and I think they're they're prepping. They're always busy doing stuff. So hopefully, at some point, our paths will cross again on screen. Um, and I, but I don't know. And as far as <clears throat> what I have coming up, I am currently in pre production on Squealer, mm-hmm. and so I I wrote co-wrote the script with my partner Andy he will be directing I am producing but I'm also playing the lead role oh that's awesome so yeah that's yeah. exciting oh so that's, that's exciting. really exciting and then we have a couple other projects in the pipeline that I have um supporting role they're they're bigger movies that will have like bigger star names and then I have supporting roles in those um and then just you know I'm here like every other actor in LA doing the grind, just <laughs> out there hustling. And um, it's kind of funny, this business, you know, things turn on a dime. I was actually at the vet with my dog when I got the call from um, Deb actually called me and put Zach on the phone to tell me about Soccer Mom. And it was not something that I had auditioned for or anything. It just literally came out of the blue and dropped in my lap. So that's how things happen sometimes. Rarely. I mean, I think regular normal people go through like this normal process, but that's just never been my way in life. <laughs> I never take <laughs> it. I mean, I've tried to go the normal conventional route on things and it just that way never is my way. Things always happen to me just sort of randomly. And um, so, yeah, you never know. I'm always waiting for that next thing to drop. When are you going to get that phone call? Maybe it, it, you know, even if it is an audition that you just don't expect it and it comes and then your life just goes in a different direction. (laughs) Um, Like with stunts, I never thought I would get into stunts. And then I, you know, I ended up having a really fantastic run for almost 20 years. So um, yeah, I don't know what's next. It's a big mystery, (laughs) but I do hope something with soccer mom will pop up again. Cause that was, that would be amazing. (laughs) That was the most fun role I ever got to do. So Thank you all for loving her as much as I do. (laughs) Well, lastly, you know, we've got to ask, this is the horror hour. We have to ask the famous question. And that is, you know, one that you might be aware of. And that is, of course, what's your favorite scary movie? Uh, um, (laughs) So I've already mentioned a couple of my favorite scary movies, but there is another movie that's a little more of a uh, probably random answer. Ooh. When I was younger, I loved the movie, The Believers. Do you guys even know this movie? I don't think I, I do. I might have stopped you. <gasps> it was with Jimmy Smith and it's a movie about Santeria, which is this, you know, um, kind of black magic kind of thing. Terrifying. It's an old movie, <laughs> but I love for some reason. I really loved that movie. That was my favorite horror movie uh, from my younger years. And then, of course, since then, I mean, Alien and Aliens, Tops, Shaun of the Dead, which I have already mentioned. <laughs> and of course, Army of the Dead. We yes. 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 Of course. And John Carpenter's Vampires. I mean, <laughs> they're, I, I all, just... they're all on the list. <laughs> You've got to work with just, I mean, those Zack Snyder and John Carpenter are legends in my book, Um, just because of everything. I think also with uh, the movies they've created, but I think the fan response and they also just seem like down to earth people like uh, the Snyders in general, just when you see Debbie and Zach and they they talk about their projects, they're just so passionate. And I love that because then if they're putting their heart and soul into it, that means they actually, you know, because you see there are movies out there that you can they're just turning them out just to put out there but i think you know the snyders they are really just they they put everything into it and i i love seeing what they produce so um and same thing john carpenter halloween i mean ah. 
Yeah. Right. Everything John Carpenter. John, John's so funny. When I first when I worked on vampires, I was so intimidated by him. He's got a very intimidating presence. <laughs> and then um, I got invited to work on Ghosts of Mars. And he actually called me in for a meeting and I was terrified. I was shaking in my shoes. I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna go one-on-one with John, like in his office. And I had this moment when I realized, oh, he's totally messing with me. Like he's such a sweetheart. <laughs> he's a really sweet guy. He just, um, yeah. And and then I started laughing and I went, ow, you're just a big teddy bear under all that. Yeah. <laughs> Here I was so scared of him. Yeah, what a, another mastermind and has just pumped out so many fantastic movies. Of course, my favorite of John's movies is um, Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so many good ones. <laughs> that is, uh, that's a movie that I can watch over and over. I remember watching it as a child. I, I mean, oh my gosh, it's, it's I love so that film. so good. All his <laughs> movies are great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, um, that is actually all the questions that we had. And um, again, I just want to say thank you. This was amazing. It was uh, fun to get to hear more about the character and then just all the stunt work and just everything. I I, I greatly appreciate it. I show uh. they do as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up then <laughs> and um, say that's all. That's all for today's episode of The Horror Hour. Um, thank you all for listening. Um, join us next week when I finally get Ben and George to sit down and watch Hellraiser for the first time. So that will surely be a lively debate um, on Clive Barker's classic. Um, so make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an episode. Um, and if you haven't, go follow us on social media. We're at The Horror Hour tv um to keep up with all the latest news and if you have a question or want to give your thoughts on a following topic uh, just use the hashtag the horror hour um and then also danielle uh, where can people find you i am on twitter instagram and on vero which is uh, if you guys are fr- huh? fans of zach's you know zach is mostly on vero <laughs> yes. and i do love that <laughs> app um so yeah i think i'm pretty easy to find I think if you just put in Danielle Burgio, you'll find me, but my handle on Instagram and Twitter is Danny Burgio 1111. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Well, again, um, thanks everyone for uh, listening. So we'll see you all next time. Thanks for having me. You have been listening to the Horror Hour. See you next time.